What's going on, Sumo Lings? Thank you so much for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. I am Lindsay, and today I am joined by the team over at Elements Kit. Elements Kit is a plugin for Elementor that includes high quality widgets, templates, modules, and sections for increased productivity and site performance. It is available on AppSumo right now, starting at $49 for a lifetime deal. Before we dive into the walkthrough, though, I just want to tell y'all a few quick things. Uh, the first is that if you want to tell us a little bit about your use case, why you're interested in this product, you can go ahead and do that over in the chat room. If you have any questions about the tool, the deal, how to get set up, you can leave those questions in the Q&A box down below this video. Um, we do have somebody on standby to answer questions, but we will also be circling back to questions at the end of the walkthrough, um, which is especially important if you're watching this in the replay. There will be a replay of this available uh, and you can watch this as many times as you would like. All right, that's it for me. Hey, Ashraf, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Thank you for inviting me here. So it is very uh, good to have you. Uh, yeah, let me yeah, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased to be here. I'm really pleased to be here. Yeah, yeah of course. All right. So I, I also want to uh, welcome all of you for joining us here in this webinar. And in this webinar, we're going to be talking about uh, Elements Kit and the features of it. And it's, it's kind of going to be a fast video because Elements Kit provides uh, lots of lots of tutor tutorials and uh, modules. And so in the short time, it's quite a bit hard for us to cover up everything, but we'll walk through uh, some of our important modules and widgets. All right, so let's get into it. I would like to share my screen right now. All right, so this is our screen. The first thing I want to talk about is a visitor landing page. If you visit our landing page, uh, you'll find uh, all of our features are decorated and we want you to explore all of our features and see them. If you find uh, anything confusing for you, uh, call us or message us, I will be glad to answer them. All right, so the first uh, thing uh, we want to talk about is our demos. Uh, Elements get provide uh, you 60 different type of widgets and it offers you 25 ready templates, 40 header footer template, and 50 header footer section. And right now, let's see what kind of demo we have. Now, after we visit the Elements Get landing page, then navigate to Elements Demo, they will find all the list of our demos. And I don't want to open all of them. I want to uh, specifically open some of them, like let's see what we have in the timeline page. So inside of the timeline page, uh, you'll find some beautiful timeline. And there you can see this is, this is the vertical style. And this is the horizontal style. Here the section or the in information comes after the hover, after you hover the items. And then you have another one. It's, it's also a vertical one, but um, every uh, items you can put a different color. Now, the next one is also a vertical one, but it's quite simple and uh, minimalist. For those of you who like a minimalist design, and this is, this is with the background color. If you go here and see the demos, I guess uh, uh, you'll find more than uh, the demos you need. Now, next one is going to be the team widget. Now in your web page, I uh, might need a team widget and you might think of designing team widget. But if you visit here, this is our team widget, which is kind of dark version, but it's, it's really beautiful. And this is the next one where you'll find a bit of radius at the top, kind of modern design. And there's also next one, a bit of colorful design. And this is another one. And if you scroll down, you'll find around 28 different types of demos. And I guess you don't need more than this and you don't need to invest your time on uh, designing the things. So uh, we will we'll again want you to see those demos. And we'll also show you how you can use those demos within a few couple of clicks. All right, now the next one is uh, the Lothi animation. For those of you who like Lothi animation and want to use in a web page, uh, this is a kind of feature that we have included for you uh, to use the Lothi animation. And the user guidance is, is very easy. The, the, the way you upload image on the web page, this is the same process to use the Lothi animation. All right, and another thing is that we have, uh, we have a video tutorial on every kind of widget, every kind of, uh, modules uh, on our channel on YouTube. And if you see them, you'll have detailed guideline about using uh, this uh, Lothi animation site and team widget and so on. 
And for those of you who like to use uh, WooCommerce related uh, widget, we, we also have the WooCommerce related widget. To see them, go to Elements Demo. After that, in the right corner, you'll find Uproduct List, Uproduct Carousel, U Category List, U Mini Cart. And we won't see uh, all of them. We would like to uh, show you Product List and Product Carousel just for now. Okay, so into the product list, there you can see you have a product list and you can customize all of them, like the category, name, rating, uh, price. And this is another style where you'll have add to cart button and the batch, sell batch. And if you click on it, there you can see the bigger version of the image. If you click on this I button, and this is the checkout page, detail page. So uh, you, can, you can use them, you can use them. This is, this is another one where the image uh, plays at the background of the information. And this is side-by-side -side, uh, demo. Now, let me show you the carousel one. So this is the carousel one. And inside of this carousel one, uh, you have the carousel feature. This is another one where you'll have the dot feature. Um, this is the next one where you have the add to cut button. Uh, this is another one, and that's it. All right, now the next one is the icon box. And the icon box is huge. There you have 33 different types of demos. And uh, without icon box, you cannot finish a website. It's must needed. So that's the reason we have uh, given you 30 different types of demos that you can use for your website. Uh, you don't need to think of the design. You can just import it and change the content as you want. They'll find around 30 different types of demos, and we will, we like to, we want you to see those demos. All right, now we have talked about the demos. It's time to see how you can import those demos into your website. It's very easy. Go ahead and open up any page with Elementor Page Builder. And in this page, uh, I'm sorry if I if I'm talking a bit faster. I I I I'm talking a bit slower so that you can get what I'm talking. So. Uh, into this page, we want to import the demos we have seen recently. So you'll find an eKit icon. Click on the icon. Then in the ready page, they will find all of our ready page. They will find around 30 different types of ready page. We continuously add new, new ready page. And then if you go to the header, they'll also find 40 header footer. In the section, you also find around 200 sections. If you go to widget preset, they will find around 500 widget preset that you can directly use into your website. Now, for now, I want to import a section and the section is going to be, uh, which one? I guess this one would be perfect. So if you want to use this one, open it, they'll find the insert button and the light preview button. For those of you who want to see how the light preview look like, you can click on the light preview link or you can click insert. So now I'd like to click insert just to show you how it works. And this is the demo I have. If you want to customize it, it's very simple. Just click on the item you want to customize and the left side, you'll find all of the settings to customize. For now, let's use new text. Uh, there you can see the result. All right, so uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is our uh, dashboard. Well, when you purchase a plugin and want to use a plugin, using a dashboard is very important because when you don't know about the dashboard or you're not familiarized with the dashboard, uh, I guess it's going to be a nightmare for you to handle everything. So this is our dashboard, which is very simple. If you open our dashboard, into the dashboard setting, you'll find some of the links like our easy documentation link. Uh, we have video tutorial, as we have uh, told you. You can go through, go through all about a video tutorial from here. And after that, if you go to elements, they'll find all about the elements. And this, this is around uh, 70 type of uh, different uh, widgets, but we call it 60 different type of widgets. And uh, you can explore them. And we also allow you to enable and disable them. Now, if you go to modules, they'll find uh, eight different types of modules that you can use for your web page. We we'll talk about all of the modules one by one in detail, but right now I'm just going to give you a guideline how uh, 
what we have. Now, then find the options to enable and disable them. If you disable any of the module, all the associated uh, assets will be disabled, including the PHP classes. So what will happen, uh, it will make your website faster than you ever thought possible and keep the things clean, all right? So you can enable and disable the modules uh, that you like to use. If you don't want to use any of the module, just disable it, that would, that would be very fine. Now, if you go to user data, now inside of the user data, uh, you'll find so many options like the MailChimp data uh, and Facebook feed, uh, Facebook page review, and so on. We'll be talking about these things uh, later, but uh, let, let me keep these things as it is. All right. Now, after we have talked about the dashboard, uh, it's time to talk about our header footer builder. This is our header page. Now let's go to the modules. And this is the header footer builder. Before using the header footer builder, make sure that uh, enable the header footer builder. It will allow you to work with the header footer. And just to show you how it works, this, this is the home one, and this is the home two. And um, let's refresh the pages. Okay, so uh, this is the home one and this is the home two. Inside of the home one, you'll find a default header and also the default footer. Let me show you, show you the default footer. This is the default footer. And now go to the second page. And this is the second page. And the see in these pages are also coming from our layout kit. If you want to use them, uh, go to our layout kit and import them. All right, so what we want, we want to create a header and we want to use the header only for the home one. That means only for this page. So let me show you how you can do it. Uh, go to elements kit, dashboard, then they will find the header footer. Open the header footer. Now from the top, you'll find all headers and footers. And the header footers, these are for uh, filtering your header footer. But right now I want to create a new one. So I'll click add new button. Then I have to put the title I want to use. For now, I want to use header one. All right, the next one is the type. And as I want to use this template for header, so I, will, I want to use header, but for your case, if you want to uh, make this template for footer, just you have to select the footer. So let's use header for now. And the next option is one of the most important option. We call it the conditional option. So inside of this conditional option, you'll have three different options. The first one is, uh, entire site, the second one is the regular, I mean, singular, and then you have the archive site. So if you go to the entire site, and if you select it, this header or this template will be used for all the pages of your website. But if you use singular on that time, you'll have another box. If you open this box, you'll have all singulars, font page, all posts, and all pages. So uh, here, if you select only for the font page, uh, this header will be applied only for the home page, home page and uh, for all post, and then you have uh, all page and select the singulars. You know what I told, I, I have said that I want to use for only home one. So I would like to use selective singular. That means only one page. You can also select the multiple here. And from here, I'll select home one. I'll search home one. This is my page where I want to use my header. After that, click active and save changes. Now it's time to modify or edit our header template. So to do this, click edit and then click edit with Elementor. All right, so this is the page where you have to design your header. It's very easy to do. But before that, let me introduce you with our nav menu widget. From the widget panel, search nav. They'll find lots of widgets, but Take the widget where you have ekit badge, all right? I'll drag in the widget, but before that, I need to create a section here. This is a section. And to make this simple, I'm not adding any logo, not adding any button. I'm just using the nav because this is the most important one. Okay, this is the nav widget. I'll drag in here. Now I have to choose the uh, menu. I have created a menu. Uh, the menu name is menu main menu. So I'll select it. And this is the menu that I have created into the dashboard. All right, the next option is the position. So by default, it comes with the left position, left to right position, and you can make it center alignment, you can make it right alignment or uh, justified. Uh, for now, I want to keep it center alignment. 
All right, now you need to work with the mobile version, like changing the hamburger icon, mobile menu logo, and so on. So what you have to do, you have to go to the mobile menu settings in order to work with the mobile menu. Then you can change the mobile menu logo from here and also a link for the mobile menu logo. Then you can work with the hamburger icon. Now, uh, let me open the mobile menu. This is the mobile menu, how it looks like for the mobile menu. And there you have to put your logo. And let's choose a logo from here. Uh, all right, so this, this is the logo. And now what do you have to do? We have to change this hamburger. So open the setting, search an icon. I'll search menu. And this is the menu nine icon that I like to use here. And this is the icon. Don't worry, you can uh, customize this icon. Go to settings, I mean, style settings. Then you have hamburger style. And from here, you can change the icon size, color, the border and everything. Let's uh, get rid of the border from here. That's it. You can also change the uh, background color, uh, the color of the hamburger icon and so on. You can literally change everything what you want, all right? And as this is going to be a short video and I don't want to cover up everything. Uh, if you face any issue, I can watch our video on, on nav menu and header footer and you'll find everything on that video. All right, now I also want to import uh, the header that offered by LMS Git. I mean, the demo of the header that offered by LMS Git. So I'll again open the layout kit from here, then I'll go to headers. And now let's choose a header from here. Let's scroll down. This is the header that I'd like to use. And open it, click insert now. All right, we have got my header. So uh, there you can see there is an icon missing. It's, it's not a issue, just click on the icon and reload it, then it will be automatically loaded. Okay, so uh, again, click on the nav menu, choose the menu, and this is it. This is a ready template. So this is how you can easily create header and footer with just one click. You don't need to think about the design of your header. All right, now it's time to uh, see the demos. Is our functionality working fine or not? I'll update it. And remember, we have used this header only for the home one. So let's go to the home one and refresh the page. And let's see, is it working or not? And as a result, you can see, we have got our header for the home one. And what about the home two? Let's go to the home two and refresh the page. No, we haven't got it because we didn't apply it for the home one. So right now we're going to change the setting. We like to use this header for the entire site. Again, go to header footer. This is the header that we are using and change the condition to entire site. Again, click save changes. Now go to home to and refresh it. All right, and uh, there you can see it's working. Now our header has been applied for all the pages. All right, now you need to use the mega menu and elements get offers you advanced mega menu. It's, it's the same drag and drop feature uh, when you're trying to create a mega menu. Uh, this is a mega menu landing page. If you visit this page, this is a vertical mega menu at the left side. Um, uh, some uh, features like you can uh, use a mega menu. It, it's, it's a WooCommerce friendly. You don't need any coding experience and highly customizable. And obviously it's based on Elementor. Now, uh, this is the demo one. I uh, see this is uh, the horizontal demo. This is the mega menu tab. This is the second one and this is the third one. All right, this is the vertical one. And you know, the vertical is, one is very important when you're trying to create a WordPress uh, site. I mean, WordPress WooCommerce site. So uh, for the WooCommerce vertical menu, this one is very important. So there you can see this is the one and you can uh, toggle it. You can hide it and show it. This is the next one. There is no toggle option. There's another one. All right. Now I want to show you how we can make a mega menu. Go to your dashboard, appearance. And before that, make sure that you have the module is activated. So go to elements kit modules, then make sure the mega menu is activated. Then go to appearance and menus. Now, these are my menus, but no option to use the mega menu. So what I want to do, I want to enable this mega menu 
And, and now what I want to do, I want to hover every item. And there you can see that I have the mega menu option. If you click on any of the item, as an example, I want to use the mega menu for home, click on this, enable it, and at the top, you'll find some option like icon for the mega menu, badge, and the settings. So you know what to do with a badge. You can change the color, uh, the text, and from the icon, you can choose an icon for your mega menu. And if you go to the settings, there you can control the default width, full width. And if you want to use, if you, want, if you, if you like to use a specific width on that time, you have the custom width option, all right? Now, I don't want to uh, talk about these things more and we have videos based on these settings. Now go to content and inside of this content, you have the mega menu and WP submenu list. And let's open the mega menu here. And there you can see we have the same uh, demo, uh, same feature of uh, adding drag and off uh, widgets. All right, if you want to use, you can drag and off any of the, any of the widget you like to use for the mega menu. But for our case, I want to show you uh, the demos that Elements Kit offers you for the Mega Menu. So again, open the Layout Kit feature, uh, then go to section, go to Headers, and these are the Mega Menu demos that you can directly use into your website. Just import it and change the settings, change the content like you want. All right. So this is how you can you can work with the Mega Menu. Now, next next one we have is our Okay, the next one we have is our widget builder. And this is guest. You can make your own custom widget on the fly. You don't need to be experienced with coding a lot. If you know basic HTML, CSS, uh, you can make your own custom widget for Elementor. All right, now let me show you what we are exactly going to build in this video. So this is a kind of uh, infinity, uh, we can say infinity, gallery that we are going to build. And there I have a simple HTML code and simple CSS code. So we're going to use this uh, code fan uh, code and we're going to make our own custom widget based on this code. So what we'll do, we'll go to our elements kit. After that, again, enable the widget builder module, go to uh, elements kit modules and make sure the widget builder module is, module is activated. Okay, similarly for the parallax, you need to enable it. For the sticky, you need to, you need to enable it. And this is how you need, to, you need to continue. Okay, so there you'll find the widget builder option. Go to widget builder. After that, you'll have the options to create a new one or import. Okay, so uh, I want to create a new one. So I'll click add new. And they'll have three different columns. Now in the first column, there is the setting here you have to choose your widget name, widget icon, and the category. And the next one is uh, the control option where you have to drag and drop your op uh, option, the controls. And the another one, this is the third one where you have to put all of your codes. So what I will do, I will make a widget step by step. So here I want all of you to be focused uh, on the cursor, uh, on the, my movement of the cursor, because this is going to be important for all of you. And this is really interesting. So what I will do, I'll copy this entire HTML code and paste it into this HTML section. After that, I'll copy this entire CSS code and paste it here. All right, so after that, I'll change the widget name. I'll make the widget name infinity, uh, F -I -N -I -T -E, infinity grid. And I'll choose the icon as this is going to be a, a kind of uh, gallery. So I'll choose image. Okay, this is the icon I like to use. After that, I need to choose the widget uh, category. For now, I want to use the category side, then click save. Now we are ready to see the preview. So let's see the preview. This is the page where I'm going to see the preview. So I'll refresh the page. Now we'll search infinity grid. 
Uh, this is the widget, Infinity Grid, and you can remember the logo that we have used. If you drag in the widget here, there you can see it's working. It's, 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 it's one of the finest uh, module or one of the finest features that AliBasket offers you. You can make your own custom widget on the fly. Um, it's very easy, you can see. So what I'll do, I'll make it full width. And now if you click on this widget, it don't find any control. So let me show you how you can add a new control for the widget. Okay, so this is the page. The first control we like to use here, uh, we want to dynamically change this URL. Okay, so what we'll do, uh, we'll search here, URL control, and we'll drag in the control into this control column. After that, you have the label and the name. So the name I would like to use URL uh, main. So the name I want to use main. Okay. After that, he will have the default URL. By default, we want to use this URL. I'll cut this one. Okay, so this place is completely empty. We want to use the URL dynamically. So let's make it default URL. Now in this place, we need to use a variable that refers to this URL. So in the right side, you have that option, the main, there you can see the main option, which is this name. So what I will do from here, I'll select main URL. Okay, I'll need to put my cursor here. Then I need to choose main URL. And one thing to be noted is that we have detailed video guideline how you can make your own custom widget on the fly using our widget builder. So you can, you can watch our tutorials from our channel. Uh, it will help you to understand in detail. So we have added our URL control. Now let's save it and see the output. Again, refresh the page and wait for the result. Now it's working fine, which, which is a good thing. So uh, it's loading. So again, click on the widget. Now in the left side, you'll find a control to work with it. But what if I delete this URL I don't see any output because the URL is coming dynamically. Again, add it. Yes, it's working fine. Now, you might need to control uh, the speed of this animation. Let's add another control that will help you to control the speed of this animation. So what I will do, I will take another control, which is slider. This is the slider control. I'll drag in here. Now, in the slider control, you'll find a different type of settings here. What I will do, I'll make the default uh, size, I mean, the default speed. But before that, let me change the title. I'll change that label name speed. I don't wanna keep beside that because it won't be relative. So I'll change the name speed and also the name I want to change as speed, that refers to speed. Okay, and you know, that's, here the animation is coming from the CSS. So what I would like to use here, I'd like to cut this, uh, speed section and I want to paste it here. So what I will do, I will take another tag, a style tag and paste it here. Okay, so in this point, uh, let me try to zoom it so that you can understand everything is very clear. Okay, so in here, we want to change only this speed section, this 50 seconds, okay, dynamically. So what I will do, I will cut this one Okay, I'll keep the S that refers to second. Okay, so in here we, we want to add a variable and let's give the default size that means the default is speed 100. Okay, and in here we need to replace our variable. So this is one sp.size, okay? Remember the sp, this is our name. Okay, keep your cursor here and select the sp. All right, so we are ready to go. Again, click save. Now go to the home page now refresh the page. Yes, it's working fine. Now again, if you, it's loading again. Okay, again, if you click on this uh, widget in the left side, you'll have the option to control the speed. Right now it's 100, but if you reduce the speed, there you can see it's moving very fast. Isn't it amazing? It's, it's really amazing to be honest. You can make your own custom widget without any deep coding experience, only HTML, CSS, and drag and drop feature, we can make it happen. All right, now it's time to move on to our next module. And the next module is going to be really, really important. All right, uh, let's 
let's disable it. And the next module we have is our one page scroll. Another one page scroll is very important. Just if you, if you scroll your cursor a little bit and it will take you or navigate to the next section. So in order to use a one page scroll, uh, this is the demo that we're going to use for the one page scroll. Okay. And let me show you how we can do it and how it looked like. Again, go to the settings here. It's very simple. They will find elements kit settings. After that, enable the one page scroll. That's it. That, that's all about you need to know about it. And after that, you'll find more and more, more and more options. We have, as, as I just said, we have detailed video on everything. You can go through them and you'll know uh, the settings. But right now I want to keep it none just to make the things simple. After that, what I have to do, I have to specifically select the sections where I want to use the one page scroll feature. Uh, this, is, this is the one, this is the first one, bus section, go to that section, again, go to advanced, and then open elements kit one page scroll. After that, enable the one page section. And similarly, go to the second one, advanced, uh, one page scroll and enable it. And to make my life easy, I would like to uh, use uh, the copy paste one, paste the style here, paste the style here, also here. Okay. All right. I guess this is, this is enough to show you how it works. Okay. Paste this time. Now, let's see the output. Update and go for the light preview. Okay, I want you to be focused here and I want you to see uh, the animation. So what I'm doing, I'm scrolling a bit here. It's taking me to the next section. Again? Yes, it's taking me to the next section. It's awesome. So it's more than this. You have, you have more features than this. Just watch our videos or uh, contact us. We'll help you uh, to build your website uh, in, in, in an in amazing way. All right, so this is our uh, one page scroll feature. Now, next, see, next one. Let's see the next one. And the next one is the parallax one. It's amazing. It is it's really uh, very attractive. It will help you to attract your users on your website and it will really make your website very interactive and user friendly. Okay, so uh, let's see uh, what, you, what kind of thing we have into our parallax effect. So this is a parallax effect landing page. And if you scroll down, there you'll find some demos that you can directly use into your website. And from this, let's open this one. Okay, just one I'm going to show you. Uh, this is the parallax effect. And I want you to notice what's happening. I'm scrolling down slowly so that you can see what's happening here. I need to refresh the page so that I can get the full CSS styles here. Okay, this is the style you can see, kind of good animation, CSS animation. Um, focus on this object, these two objects, these three objects, and there's a tilt effect. It's moving according to my cursor. There you can see, it's amazing. And other two objects are moving horizontally and vertically according to my scroll. If I scroll down, they are moving top and right. If I scroll down or scroll up, it's moving uh, top to bottom. Okay, there you can see, it's, it's amazing. You can make it happen into your website. Have you noticed? I guess, yes. Okay, and you can also see the live demo uh, from our Elements Git landing page. Okay, this is another one. It's the speed is quite a bit faster. Okay, and notice the background mountain have you noticed? I guess yes. And also the CSS animation, wonderful. Okay, and this one, this one is amazing. This is, this is the header, okay, focus on it. According to my scroll, this is uh, the uh, size is increasing and decreasing. Have you noticed? All right. This is a scale X scale. 
Okay. I guess this is it, and uh, it will help me to understand how powerful LMS Gate is. Um, let me show you a demonstration how you can uh, use it. It's very easier to do. Okay. So this is the page. And I, what I want, I want to use a little bit parallax effect here in this uh, page. Uh, focus on the mountain at the, at the background. So what I will do, I'll use some parallax effect. So this is the first image. This is the image at the left side you can see. And what I want, I want to use the parallax effect. So I'll go to advanced, then I will go to uh, elements gate effects. After that, from the effect type, they'll find CSS effect tilt effect, on scroll effect, and mouse move effect. For now, I want to choose the mouse move effect for this one, and it's moving beautifully. Uh, the next one is also, this is the next image, and this is elements gate effect. Again, choose the mouse move. All right, there you can notice what's happening. Let's see the light preview. Update it, and see the light preview. It's wonderful, you can see. Okay, now next one is going to be uh, the other parallax effect, like the CSS and the tilt effect. So for the CSS, uh, there you can see there is a halt uh, text. Here we have added some CSS animation. We'd like to click here to show you what we have applied here. Okay, this is the heading. Element skit effect, and this is the CSS animation. So inside of the CSS animation, you have the flash option. They'll find around 20 different types of CSS animation, like swing, uh, tada, uh, jello. For the button, let's use uh, the CSS animation for the button. It will uh, visually be clear. So again, click on element skit sticky, type CSS animation, and CSS animation, and CSS transform. For now, let's open the CSS animation. Okay, so this is the infinity one. That means this uh, animation will be infinity. This is the fade one. Let's use the rotate. Let's see what we have. We have zoom option. We have uh, jello option. Okay, all right. Uh, for now, I want to uh, make it simple and I don't want to use the CSS animation for the button, but for your case, you can see the, see the CSS animation or apply the CSS animation. Okay, now this is, uh, this is the animation where we, we want to use a different type of animation here. So focus on this image. Then if you go to this effect, and now let's select the tilt effect. Okay, so this is how we are going to use the tilt effect. It's very simple. After that, you can control the max tilt and uh, image scale too. Now go to uh, uh, on scroll. And on your scroll, you have parallax style. This is X axis, Y axis, rotate style, scale style, and scale Y and X. So what I will do, uh, first I want to show you the X axis. Now it's, it's moving according to my cursor, okay? It's X axis. And let's choose uh, the scale one, okay? Uh, from the scale one, you'll have the parallax transition and smooth. So the parallax transition is basically the value of the scale. So what I want to do, I want to use a two, and there you can see that it's increasing its size depending on my scroll. It's amazing, you can see. So when I scroll up, its size is increasing. When I scroll down, uh, its size is decreasing. So based on your scroll, its size will be controlled. And you'll have more than this, as we have told you that this is just a kind of demonstration what we have, but in our uh, landing page, in our uh, widget builder, in our uh, video tutorial, you'll find more than this. All right, now, next one is going to be our sticky feature. All right, so let me uh, walk you through with our sticky landing page, okay? And the sticky feature here you can see at the top, you can also make it with our elements kit plugin. All right, and you'll find videos. You'll find individual videos of the sticky menu, uh, color change on sticky, uh, show on scroll up feature, header footer is sticky, sidebar is sticky, sticky until, and so on. 
So uh, let me walk you through some of the demos, some of the demos that we have. Uh, the first one we have is the sticky menu. And no, I don't want to show you the menu here. I want to show you the sticky menu uh, with the menu that you have already created just to make everything realistic. So what I will do, I'll show you the other controls, other features like uh, color change on a sticky. Let, let me show you what it is. Show on a school of and a sticky until and a sticky offset. This is it to make you understand how powerful it is. Okay, so focus on this header and this color, background color. So when the header becomes sticky, it background colors change. Okay, so this is the feature that we have. And this is one, this is on show and scroll up. So when I scroll down, the header doesn't show. And when I scroll up, it shows. So it will help you to make your screen clean and it will give you more space to show your content. And it will only show you when you will scroll up. And the next one is sticky until. Uh, look at the S, okay? This is now is sticky. When I scroll up, it's remain sticky. C, K, Y, all of them become sticky. But when this section come, it lose its stickiness. It become moving. So this is what we call sticky until. You can keep any section or keep any widget sticky until any section appear, okay? All right, the next one we have is the sticky offset. You can make any part or any uh, widget is sticky in any point of your screen. Focus on this, on this image with a tilt effect. This image have become sticky in this point. From the top, this become sticky here. All right, so this is all about the settings you need to know in order to work with a sticky. Uh, and let me show you how you can make it or the controls of a sticky. Okay, so here what we want, we want this sidebar, this uh, menu, we want this menu to be sticky at the left side and we want the right side content moving, okay? So go to that section, then elements get sticky, open the sticky, there you have top, bottom, column and show on a scroll up, okay? So we, ha we have already talked about everything, but to show you how it works, uh, I want to choose column, okay? So there you can see it became sticky on column. When the column finish, it, it, it loses stickiness, okay? Here you can also specify the sticky offset. Right now I have used 100, that means from the top, top to 100 pixel, it will become sticky. And then you have another class, I guess, can you see or not? I don't know, but there is a class which is a sticky effect class. Well, this class will be automatically added into this section or part when this part will be sticky. And using this class, you can make your own idea, you can add your own CSS or style when this part will become sticky. And it can also work with the devices, like uh, you can work all device, you can apply it for desktop only or desktop and tablet device, okay? Now, let me introduce you, you with our next option. Okay. All right, our next option is going to be uh, so many options. Let me show you what we have. Uh, let me go to the modules. And um, this is the elements gate modules. Now, we have talked about this sticky parallax. Now it's time to talk about the Facebook Messenger. Yes, you can use the Facebook Messenger uh, into uh, your widget, I mean, into your page. Uh, with the API, what you need to do, make sure the Facebook Messenger module is activated. After that, go to user data and then find the Facebook Messenger here. This is the Facebook Messenger. And what you have to do, you just have to put uh, your uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook ID, fa Facebook page ID, and that will help you to uh, uh, add the Facebook Messenger on your website. So let's add my Facebook page ID. And okay, uh, I need to find my ID here. So give us a moment, just one minute. It will take me one minute to add my ID. So for now, I want my skin to be disabled just, just for 10 seconds, I guess it, it, it would be fine. No, I don't need to. So what I want to do, I want to write my Facebook page ID. It's going to be OK, 
Okay, so this is the ID that I was looking for. Save change. Uh, let's see what we have. This is a very simple way to add your Facebook Messenger into your website. Save change again. Now let's see the output what we have. Okay, it's again, enable the module. Now, this is the page where we want to see how it's working. Let's see the live preview here. And there in the right bottom corner, you can see the Facebook page review. If you don't like this color, you can change the color. Let me show you how you can do it. From here, choose another color. Okay. All right, this is the closer one. Click Save Change, again, refresh it. And there it is, okay. Now, if you don't know how to collect your Facebook ID or how to enable, how to work with it, uh, there you have the documentation. Just click on How link and it will take you to the documentation. They will read everything, how to, how you can use it. All right, now our next module that we have is the conditional module. A conditional module will help you to show your content based on certain conditions, like on user roles and so on. Let me show you what we have in this case. And this is a conditional module page where we want to use it. Let's take a section, okay? So this is the section. This is a section that we want to show based on certain condition. So what we'll do, we'll go to the section, then go to advanced, they'll find uh, elements get conditions. If you open it, enable it, they'll find some condition. They'll find actually two different types of controls. Uh, let me tr try to zoom in so that you can see clearly. So here you have the display on, and there we have all condition meet and any condition meet. I'll come to this later, just give us a moment, but we, I want to start with the second one, which is the condition. In here, you can add a multiple condition as much as you want. So the first condition here we have uh, is the condition type, like login status, user role, operating system, browser, date, day, and time. So in this video, I'm just going to be uh, give you a guideline about uh, the login status and the user role, and also uh, the operating system. Okay, so for the login status right now, I'm logged in, and this is the true false, is or is not. So what I want to do, I want to show this content if the user is logged in, okay? So I have select the status is logged in, okay? And meet all condition, any condition. For now, I'll choose any condition and I will, I will talk about it, what it is. Okay, so for now, let's choose logged in and Okay, so I guess I need to make you understand a bit clearly here. First, let me start from the beginning. Go to the section, elements get conditions, enable it. There we have uh, two different types of controls. The first one you have is, uh, is the meet option where you can show the content based on all condition or if any condition become true, you can show the content. and the next option you have is the condition itself. So here you can put multiple condition. For now, I want to use only one condition. Okay, so inside of this one condition, you have three different type of fields. From the first field, you need to choose the type of the condition, like users, user role, login status, operating system, and so on. For now, choose user status and ease. It, that means when I will be logged in, I can see the condition. So this is my condition and I am saving it. And for now I'm logged in and let's see if I can see the condition, see the content. Yes, I can see the content. But what if I open the same link into incognito mode? I'm not logged in right now. And as a result, I don't see any kind of uh, information because I have selected the condition when the user will be logged in on that time he can see uh, the content, all right. Now, uh, I want to apply another condition, okay? Another condition is going to be the operating system. Right now, I'm using Windows operating system. 
So what I will do, I'll select Ubuntu and I'll make the condition is not, okay? And let's see what we have. Update. Yes, I can see the condition here. And what about in incognito mode? Yes, I can see the condition. And let me show you, let me make you understand what actually happening here. Okay, here we have selected any content meet. That means in any of the condition below become true, this content will show. Otherwise this content won't show, okay? So our second condition we had, if our, if our operating system is not Ubuntu, okay? My operating system is Windows. That means Windows is not Ubuntu. That means it become true. So that's the reason this content is showing. But what if you select meet all condition? That means if all the condition become true, the content will show, okay? Now update it. I see the light preview. And what about in incognito mode? Let's refresh it here. No, I don't see any condition. So this is all about the condition uh, module that you might need to use in your website. Now, uh, we are about to end uh, talking about our features. And now I want to talk about some of our upcoming features that really going to uh, uh, blow your mind. Our next upcoming feature is going to be a copy paste, uh, cross domain copy paste module. And what cross domain copy paste module do? Let me show you what it do. Okay, imagine this is a section and this is uh, in demo.wpmed.com and I want to use this section into a completely different domain in a completely different server, just with copy paste feature. So what I have to do on that time, I have to just click it, then I have to copy ekit, I have to uh, make it ekit copy and I, then I need to go to that specific domain, I mean, the second domain where I'm to paste it, and there I can paste uh, this section. So uh, in the next update, we'll probably uh, publish it, and uh, I guess it's really going to be an awesome feature that will speed up your working process, and uh, it will make your life easy. If you like our uh, Elements Kit, or if you want to know more about our Elements Kit, again, go to our landing page and explore more. I guess this is it, and uh, Hopefully uh, this uh, walkthrough has been very productive for all of you. Thank you. I think it has been. Thank you so much for all of that. Um, we have a few questions here. Sumo Links, if you have any more questions that you want to submit, you know, to put them in the Q&A box. I think the most popular question that we got, um, I saw at least a few times, is whether you need Elementor Pro. No, 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 not at all, not at all. We definitely don't need Elementor Pro. You can use all of our uh, features, all of our modules uh, with the free version of Elementor. Wonderful. Um, and then we have some more questions here specifically. Oh no, where did it go? Um, I should say that Emran has been killing it with the answering these questions. Um, so can I use a three code plan for any three pages or is it necessary that all three pages belong to one WordPress account? Well, well, as it depends on the packages, as you said, that uh, uh, the three coders, that means uh, the ultimate, uh, you're talking about the uh, unlimited uh, site feature in the package, and uh, you will get uh, the lifetime feature, and you can use uh, multiple uh, uh, websites, uh, our elements get in multiple different type of uh, website. Don't worry about this. Great. Um, do you have a community or will you have a community or place to share widget codes? Yes, obviously, if you, if you face any problem uh, about the issues, about any kind of issues, uh, we have a, a Facebook uh, group, a WPMAT community. You can go there and join there and uh, share your ideas there and uh, try to stay with us. And uh, we, we'll keep you posted everything on that community. So we'd like to invite you there. Wonderful. Uh, and then this is another popular question. And this is the last one that I have here for us. Uh, I noticed this particular element is pro. Does that mean we would have to pay extra for it? No, not at all. Uh, once you buy uh, our uh, full package, it, it, it definitely needs to pay farther. You can use our uh, product for lifetime. And uh, the upcoming features, like if you talk about the new demos, new template, new widgets demos, you'll, you'll get all of them for free. Once you buy, you'll get all of the upcoming features and uh, things will be free for you. Awesome. Don't worry about this. Uh, we got one last 
last second question. Uh, Rick asks, are these elements ADA compliant? So I didn't quite catch you. Are these elements ADA compliant? Uh, I, I guess I need to talk to our developer team. They can answer me better. And I want him to uh, contact our support as soon as possible. We're waiting for him. Wonderful. All right. And that's all that we have for today. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm being told this was very helpful. Um, yeah, we've we've gotten a lot of great comments about how awesome these widgets are. Um, so Sumolings, if you have not already, you should go redeem your code on AppSumo right now, appsumo.com slash elements kit, and you can redeem your code starting at $49 for a lifetime deal. And of course, it is backed by AppSumo's 60-day guarantee. So you can go ahead, get started started, play around with it and see how it works for you. Uh, once you've done that, we love to read your reviews. Right now, uh, Elements Kit has 15 reviews and a five taco rating. Uh, and if you have any more questions, you can always leave those on the deal page as well. Thank you so much, Ashraf, Iman, Emran, for hanging out with us. I hope you guys have a good one. Thank you.